Okay, um, so there are few other uh, features of test ng. So, for example, if you have got multiple tests, right? So, something like this. And um, so, this is also a test. Now you can also decide uh, which test you want to run um, in what sequence. OK, so what happens is your test test methods. They are run inside a class. Based on. Uh, based on the alphabetical order, OK, so um, they are the first letter of your test, right? Um, based on that alphabet, it will try to sequence it. Uh, based on the uh, alphabetical order. OK, so. I mean test one would be run first and then test two. OK, so that kind of sorting is applied when the test ng runs it by default, but you can um, set the priority based on your requirement as well. OK, so there is something called priority. And you can test uh, set the priority of your each of your test based on your requirement. So if I want, I can make this priority one and make this priority zero so that this test will run. So this register test will run before the login test. OK, so similarly, you can set the priority of all your tests and um, all those tests will be executed in that order. Otherwise, by default, um, it will it will execute in the alphabetical order. OK, or the ascending ascending order. Um, Whatever, if it is a numerical, it will sort it based on the ascending order or um, the alphabetical order. So that's how you set uh, the priority of your tests uh, in test ng. Okay, so that's about priority in test ng. Um, then there is something called dependencies. Okay, so you can make your test dependent on another test. Okay, so which means if some test fails and it has a dependency on another test, OK, so that test will also fail. So similar, uh, you can create dependencies like this. OK, so uh, test ng allows to specify dependencies either with annotations or you can also specify it in your XML file. Um, there are two types of dependencies, so there is hard dependencies, which means all methods will depend on must run successfully or will be marked skip in the report. OK, so whatever this test methods depend on if they run successfully. If not, then they will marked as skipped in the test report. Um, then there is soft dependencies, so test methods will always run even if some of the depend methods fail. OK, so in the first case uh, they must pass. In the second case, even if they fail, still um, all the test methods will run. OK, and you can implement this using the always run equals to true inside your test annotation. If you put this this kind of parameter right with always run equals to true, then this will become a soft dependency. Otherwise, it will be a hard dependency, which means um, uh, all the methods which are dependent on those methods should be successful. OK, so. One example of this is here. OK, so there are two methods. Um, there is this test one method and there is this test two method. And I can make this test two method depend on the test one method. OK, so. Once the test one method executes and is successful, then only it will come to this test two method. OK. If if it fails, this test one fails, then test two will be marked as skip. OK, so it, it won't execute this test two method. So this is uh, helpful in scenarios where you have dependency between multiple tests. OK, so you don't want to say, for example, um, this register and this login test, right? So unless you don't register your 
user, you don't want to log in, right? Because if the register test fails, then there is no meaning of running the login test. So in that in that case, what you can do is you can make it depend on the register test. OK, so if the register test passes, then only execute the login test. So similar kind of dependency you can create within your test methods. Okay, and you can do it using this depends on methods and you give. Give the name here, so this is register. So this is all about dependencies. Um, you can make it depend on methods. You can also make it depend on groups as well. OK, so both both ways are possible. OK, um, so TestNG also provides you a way of um, ignoring certain tests during your execution. OK, so that can be done using an annotation itself. OK. Um, you can do it on a class. OK, at the class level all also at the package level. So if you do it at the class level, it will ignore all the tests in your class. Uh, if you do it at a package level, um, it will ignore all tests in a particular package. OK, um, as I said, it is done by an annotation. So at ignore annotation can be used to ignore the test methods. OK, so during execution, uh, your test ng will ignore all the test methods which have this annotation which is at ignore. Uh, this annotation is equivalent to uh, enabled equals to false. If you put enabled equals to false um, uh, or at ignore both mean the same thing. So that test method will be ignored during the execution. OK, so it will look something like this. So not here, sorry. So at the top of the class, you can say at ignore. OK, so this will ignore all the test met methods inside this particular class. Um, now, if you want to ignore just a single method, you can do it using enabled equals to false. OK, so this will only ignore this particular test method. Not all the test methods. You can remove this particular, but if you want to ignore all the test methods in a class, just put ignore. Now, this is another way of filtering. Um, right, so if you don't want to run any particular tests uh, in a particular cycle, you can just put this annotation and uh, it will ignore those tests. OK, so till now we haven't seen. I mean, we haven't passed any parameters into our test ng tests, right? So we have been um, looking at organizing our tests and filtering our tests, but uh, all our test methods were without any parameters. OK, but you can also pass parameters into your test ng test methods. Um, so it allows you to define any number of parameters in your test methods. OK, uh, it can be passed using the parameters annotation. And uh, it can be placed on any method that has at test at before or at after. Now um, they are mapped these XML parameters, right, uh, which are defined in your tests. They are mapped to the Java parameters in the same order as they are found in the annotation. OK, so. These parameters would be passed into your Java methods, OK, and it will be in the same order as you have defined it in the annotation. That is only in the case if you have multiple parameters. If you have a single parameter, uh, you don't need to uh, take care of the order. OK. So parameters can be declared under a suit or a test tag. And if two parameters have same name, uh, one defined in test will have the precedence. OK, so if you have defined um, same parameters in a suit or a test, the test parameter will have precedence over the other parameter. OK, so that will come first. 
Now there is also something called a data provider. It is a method on the class that returns an array of objects, right? So these are just single parameters, but this will return an array of objects. This is used for more complex parameters which you need to pass. Um, it is also used in cases where you want to do data driven testing. OK, so where you are passing an object of the Excel, right? So if you're reading an Excel and you're passing uh, your cell values in in form of array of objects, so that can be passed using the data provider. Uh, data provider method is annotated with add data provider. So uh, parameters is add parameters. OK, so both are used for uh, parameterization in your test ng methods. Now. A good example of parameters, right? So. Let me remove all this. OK, so um, a good example of parameters uh, which you can use in your test ng is uh, when you are trying to. Um, run your tests in different browsers, right? So now we are just using a single browser, but um, you can also run your tests in multiple browsers. OK. So for that we can use parameters. Let's look at that. Okay, so I will call this. Multi browser. We'll define the driver here. OK, so I will call this setup. And inside this, what I will have is a browser parameter. OK, now based on this browser parameter, I can have different browser setups. OK, so if um, browser. Dot equals. We can use this. OK. Chrome. Then I will. Have the Chrome setup. OK, else. If. Browser dot equals ignore case Firefox. OK, so I can have the Firefox setup here. Similarly, I can uh, define it for all the different browsers. OK, so now depending on what browser parameter I'm passing through the test ng dot XML, it will decide on the run which browser it wants to run. OK, so inside this Chrome browser, I will have the Chrome setup. OK, similarly uh, for Firefox, I will have the Firefox setup. OK, similarly you can have for all the browsers which you are working on. Now this is this is the Java function, right? Which accepts a browser parameter, but how do we pass this browser parameter from our test ng dot XML file, right? So for that uh, you have to use. At parameters. OK, so this is the annotation which will basically make it a parameterized test method. OK, and inside this we'll have a parameter parameter core browser and that same parameter we are passing in our method. We can also define it uh, to run before class. OK, so it will run every time before this particular class. Now we have defined our browser here in the parameters. Now we need to pass it also from our test ng dot XML, right? So the value will be passed from here. So for that um, you can do it after your test. OK, so after the test you can say parameter. 
Okay, so it will have the parameter name and a value. So our parameter name is browser. And the value could be Chrome. Okay. Now what you can do is you can run multiple browsers as well. So what you can say you can call it as the Chrome test. Okay. And then you can have a similar test for Firefox. OK, and here I will pass. My browser as Firefox. OK, and this we can change to multi browser. So this way. Um, we can basically run the same test right which we have written uh, for multiple browsers okay so first it will run for the chrome browser where the parameter value is chrome and then it will run this test for firefox and you can have all your test methods inside this particular class so it will pick up that class and test methods and it will execute it on both chrome as well as firefox so this is something also called as cross browser testing, um, which you can do in TestNG using this parameters concept. So we have something also called parallel execution. Another feature of TestNG, which is um, kind of different than other test frameworks, right? Which which uh, are not provided in other test frameworks. So TestNG allows us to run our tests in parallel in different threads. Okay. Um, that could be defined at different levels. OK, so you can make uh, parallel methods, right? So each test method will run in separate thread. Uh, or you can make your tests as parallel. Again, test will run in separate thread. Or you can make your classes in parallel. So each class will run in a separate thread, right? So all these three types of possibilities are there. So either you can run your methods in parallel or you can run your tests in parallel or your classes in parallel, right? So it depends on you how you want to run them. Now number of threads, um, these are Java threads, right? So it can be specified in the thread count attribute uh, which you will define inside the test ng. OK, and. Uh, so uh, this is this is an example of how you would define your methods which you want to run in parallel. OK, so you will have the suit name, then define the parallel attribute. OK, equals to either put methods, test or classes, whatever you want to run in parallel, and then you can mention the thread count. OK, so uh, thread count here is five. You can increase it to 10, 100, um, anything depending on the memory of your uh, system, right? So because threads will consume uh, different, uh, I mean, Java memory, so uh, depends on how many threads you want to run your tests. So similarly, you can run your tests in parallel and multiple threads, okay? So it will look something like this here. Parallel equals to you can see there are multiple methods. OK, so methods, classes, instances also you can say or tests. OK, so if I say methods. And then I can say thread count equals to 10. OK, so there will be 10 threads simultaneous threads. So if there are 10 methods, all the 10 methods will run in 10 different threads. OK, so and all will run in parallel. So that way your execution will be much faster and you will be running all your methods in parallel across uh, all the tests. 